Hi guys, today I'm going to go over Dockers, and Dockers is a completely free open source product that allows you to encapsulate an application or service in a container, and the container will have everything it needs for that application to run. Anything the OS traditionally provided, system libraries, runtime environments, any code it needs to run that application or service, it will already be shipped in the container. So why would you do this? Because it guarantees no matter what platform you want to run your application on, it's guaranteed to work. And why would system administrators want to do this? It's because you can run services in Docker. It's built on Linux containers, and if you have used Linux containers, you probably I know that you can get even better hardware utilization using a Linux container to run your server. So you can bring up web services, database services, WordPress instance, Ubuntu Bash Shell, which I'm going to show some examples in a few moments of how easy it is to get started with Dockers, how easy it is to install and run some basic commands where you can download images and run containers in just a few minutes. So just keep watching and I'll show you how easy it is to get started. Let's start off by going to the Docker website, docker.com. On this side, we're going to have all the information we need to get started with our first uh, Docker image to get set up our Docker engine and download images. It's on this side. So if we look quickly at why Docker's or what is Docker's, it'll tell us exactly um, why we would want benefit from using Docker's. And it creates a great container for shipping applications. You could put something in a container and it's guaranteed to work no matter what platform you're running on it because you're shipping all the required libraries and runtime environment with the application itself. You're shipping what it's going to run in. So unlike virtual machines, where you actually run the entire operating system that's required by the application, you have a hypervisor running. So there's a lot of system overhead that you have to add for your application to work. With Docker, all you need is the container because the container has only what's needed to run the application. So we click on get started up on the right hand side. Um, there's a Mac and Linux and Mac OS tutorials here. So no matter what operating system you're running, you will have a tutorial here. I'm doing the Windows one. So this will show us uh, the tools we need to get started and the prerequisite system configuration that we need to be able to run a Docker engine on our system. So let's get started. So the first thing it's going to want you to do is make sure you have a 64-bit operating system. That's pretty standard now. If you're running an older laptop, you might want to double check. Um, if you go right click on your computer and go to properties, it'll tell you right there. It'll bring up this system properties information and you can check if it's 64 bit. If you're on Windows 8 or Windows 10, it's probably a pretty safe bet. Um, you also have to have hardware virtualization enabled. So that means um, that's located in the system BIOS. So you could do this before or after we do the installation. I'm going to go ahead and show it after. Um, but to double check if you already have it enabled, you go into your task manager and under processors. You can go ahead and check if hardware virtualization is enabled. If it is, you don't have to go into your BIOS and modify anything. But if it's not, it says disabled, then yes, you do. So we're going to go ahead and download our Docker toolbox. It has some screenshots here to guide you through it. The installation itself is relatively simple. Um, it does take a few minutes to download and install, but once it does, we'll be able to bring up our Docker engine command line interface and start working on downloading images and running containers. So let's go ahead and start our download, our Windows download of our Docker toolbox. Um, again, there's a Mac OS X here download. They both, this tutorial should cover the command line interface will behave on either Windows or Mac OS X the same. So whichever one you're running, you should be able to follow the rest of this tutorial. So once it's downloaded, and we're going to run our installer. It'll be in uh, your downloads folder unless you specify somewhere else. The installation itself, again, it's relatively simple. Select the, pretty much the default options and it'll allow you to start up um, our Docker environment. So again, it's just the default options here. I didn't really change anything to kind of take a look. The Oracle VirtualBox does come with this. That is because the Docker is built on Linux containers, and Linux containers should be run in a, um, well, obviously, Linux kernel. <laughs> so that means that to be able to run the Docker container, we should have a virtual machine running some kind of Linux kernel. Um, so we're going to go ahead and install that. So it's becoming more uh, popular to ship products like this. 
Um, it's actually really beneficial to guarantee that it'll work no matter what platform you're running on. You could create a Docker container and go ahead and run and put your application and build it inside a container. So if you go ahead and run the quick start, you're going to notice this error message here. And this is because the hardware virtualization is not enabled. So if you go into your BIOS, and the way you enter your BIOS is you restart your machine, you enter a hotkey, sometimes escape, F2, F9 are some common ones, and select that option for hardware virtualization to be enabled. After the hardware virtualization is enabled, and we go ahead and back, go back to our Docker Quick Start Terminal, it's going to go ahead and run, and notice what it's doing here. It's creating a VirtualBox uh, VM for us, so a virtual machine. So inside there, our Docker engine will be running. So it's going to go ahead and create some SSH keys. And this is all done behind the scenes. So it's really nice that it creates this whole environment for you. It's actually a very, very user-friendly um, interface. Um, so if you're new to Dockers or new to containers, this is a great way to start. So it does a lot of the harder stuff for us. And then it brings us to this command line. Notice this IP address here, 192.168.99.100. So we're going to remember that for later. Again, we can also pull it up. And if you're old school, you might remember Ming <laughs> GW64. I remember that from way back. But, um, okay, so the first command we're going to do is Docker. And Docker run hello world. Okay, so this is like the very basic thing you could do. So Docker is the command line interface. So all our commands will pre be predicated by Docker. And then run. One will download whatever uh, image name you put after it. So it will run or download run and download um, hello world so if it's not locally if the image is not local on the machine it will go ahead and download it from hub.docker.com so let's go ahead and try run and ubuntu bash shell so we do docker run it ubuntu and then bash it's going to download an ubuntu image run it in a container and give us an interactive bash shell back so the I, it means interactive, and the T in that command means terminal type, TTY. So it's creating an interactive terminal to a Ubuntu bash shell. Now, if you want to learn more about the, all the commands in Docker command line interface, you can go ahead and type in Docker and enter. It will print all the commands out for you and give you kind of a tiny summary of what um, the command might do. You can get additional information by typing Docker in the command and minus minus or dash dash help and I'll give you some more information. So you notice there's a number of different commands so we're going to go over a few of them. Let's go ahead and download something a little bit more com complicated than hello world or Ubuntu. So bash shell. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we would have to do to run a WordPress instance inside a, um, inside a Docker container. So if we go to hub.docker.com, this is a great site. There's tons and tons of existing images that you can download and run in a container. So we're going to download MySQL because MySQL is required by WordPress. And if you don't know what WordPress is, it's a content management system. So if we go ahead and it gives you the command right here, which is great. So Docker run and we give it a name, some MySQL. We're going to give it a password. And we're running it as D. Minus D means detached. So it's not going to give us an interactive shell. It's not going to run on our prompt. It's going to give us our prompt back, run it in the background. And then notice it's minus D, detach, minus QL, and hyphen, I'm sorry, colon, latest. So that's the latest version of MySQL. If you look at that hub.docker page, MySQL, it actually has all the tags on the top. So that latest is a version tag. So you could put... Um, a specific version number and they should give you a list of them on the top of that page and I chose the latest version now if we do a docker ps minus a we can see it's running ps minus a gives us the dockers that are currently being actively ran now we're going to go back to the hub.docker.com page and we're going to look at the wordpress instructions and configurations options they give here it gives you the entire command right here so we're going to copy and paste that over to our a docker engine command line interface now if you look here it says docker run name so we're going to give it some name this is where we're going to name our container on our local system it's going to link to um, some mysql and it's mysql so it's linking and finding the mysql 
a container that's already running on this local system. After that, we're specifying a port. So port 8080 on our local virtual machine. Again, it was that 192, 168 IP address. And then it's gonna forward that IP address or port 80 in the containers and we forward to the virtual machine port 8080. The next part of the command is minus D. It says to run in detach mode and we're in download WordPress image. So after that, it's going to go ahead and start downloading, which you saw here. And each of those downloads is a different configuration that's needed to run WordPress. So if you need Apache, how to configure Apache, the, the actual WordPress files, the WordPress configuration files, is part of each of those individual downloads that create this image. So you could say it's containers built on containers or containers stacked on containers. So let's say you need to look up your virtual machine IP address again because you forgot what it was. So if you go ahead and do a docker hyphen machine ls, it gives you information about the virtual machine running the docker engine. So if you notice the IP address there, 196, I'm sorry, 192.186.99.100, now that's the IP address of our virtual machine. And remember we forwarded, did a port forwarding to port 8080 from our uh, Docker container. So you're gonna go to that IP address on our virtual machine, port 8080, and as you can notice, here's our WordPress installation all ready to go. So it's gonna bring us to the initial WordPress configuration. And WordPress is a great content management system for developing websites. A lot of companies are using it now, very common. So if you want to practice in WordPress or actually set this up in an environment, you could. Um, or if you're selling a product that comes configured in WordPress, then this might have something you could do with Docker. So we go ahead and you can go ahead and configure WordPress just like you normally do on any system that it's running on. The interface is completely the same. So the actual configuration after this point should can be completely transparent from when if you're running on an actual physical machine or running on a virtual machine. So if we take a quick look at some of the commands we use, PS minus A lists the commands of all actively running. Uh, containers. Docker image is the image we have downloaded from Docker Hub and that we have downloaded locally on our system. So here's our Docker PS minus A showing you our actively running. Right now we have nothing actively running. So let's say we want to start up our MySQL container. So we're going to do Docker start and then the name of the container. And that's going to allow us to start up MySQL. Now we're going to start up WordPress. So now this should be able to bring us back to where we're working with the dockers and we left off. So now if we do the PS minus A, we can see both of them again. Again, our port forwarding is there and our IP address should be the same unless we changed it. We could do the um, docker hyphen machine ls to get, to get our virtual machine information again and the IP address. So that shows us what our IP address is for our virtual machine. So if we go back and open up our browser and go back to our port 8080 on our virtual machine, you could see that our WordPress site again is there, right where we left it. All right, thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, I hope you start using Dockers or containers. Both of these technologies are fantastic technologies to actually implement in a data center or a developmental environment. And you go ahead and get started really easily and for free using some basic open source products. So if you're using containers or dockers, leave the answer below. I'd like to know if you're encapsulating any of your applications or services in dockers or containers. Um, otherwise, subscribe to get updates, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.